Texas just had a great early signing period and at the time of recording are sitting as the fifth best recruiting class in the nation. So I thought we should talk about that. Texas has set itself up for the future. Not only did Texas sign Quinn Ewers, one of the best quarterback prospects we have seen in years, but Sarkeesian and his staff also flipped three players Wednesday, from the likes of Michigan, Ohio State, and Oklahoma. They added two others in four-star offensive lineman Malik Agbo and three-star wide receiver Savion Reed. A few nights ago, Texas landed top 150 offensive lineman Nito Umazula, and they are also the favorites to win the Devin Campbell sweepstakes in February, according to Crystal Ball Predictions. They will be adding a lot of offensive lineman talent and are bringing in a great quarterback, already having a great running back and wide receiver on campus. They currently have the 5th best recruiting class and the 4th best overall when you include transfers. The crazy thing is, this is a major turnaround from the story that was being sold over a month ago. At one time, it looked like Texas was going in the wrong direction. A few weeks ago, Texas Monthly was describing the situation as a dumpster fire. They had lost to Kansas 57-56 in overtime and were on a 6 game losing streak blowing double digit leads to Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Baylor. They had spent $24 million to get rid of former head coach Tom Herman and his staff after the 2020 season, then dropped another $34 million on Steve Sarkeesian and his new staff, and things were looking bad. On game day, Lee Corso said, what'd they get for $58 million? Texas got a five game losing streak for the first time in 65 years. Holy mackerel. 25 of the 53 players brought in through the 2018 and 2019 recruiting class were no longer with the program. There were talks about firing Steve Sarkeesian after one season. Their three biggest areas of needs were offensive linemen, defensive linemen, and quarterback, and at the time, it looked like a long shot to be able to fix that. A month later, things are looking very different. Texas finished their season with a win and have used that momentum to build a very strong recruiting class. ESPN gave Sark a D for the first year, saying the program's problems clearly preceded Sarkeesian and will take time to fix. But Sarkeesian struggled to establish a new culture and direction, adding significant pressure for his second season. Although Sark did an outstanding job as Alabama's offensive coordinator, his head coaching profile, 51 and 42 overall, only one season of more than eight wins, leaves much to be desired. He's making some recruiting gains, including Sunday's edition of transfer quarterback Quinn Ewers. Texas returns running back B. John Robinson and other talented pieces on both sides of the ball. Sarkeesian needs to start making genuine strides, especially with a looming departure to a tougher conference in the SEC. They've had an impressive haul for a team that missed a bowl game, and if they were to land Devin Campbell, they could jump up to the number four recruiting class. Sark seems to have everything back on track. I thought people calling for the firing of Sark were overreacting at the time. There were going to be growing pains when you bring in a new head coach, and it's why I don't think you could judge a coach until his third year with the program. Had Texas fired Sark this season, they probably don't land Quinn Ewers, and they would have lost out on a lot of great talent as, as well in the recruiting class. You probably also would have had coaches having second thoughts about taking the job after seeing the previous coach fired after one season. I like what Sark is doing, and I think he's building something special. But it's going to take time because they're going to be a young team. They've added a lot of talent on both lines and added probably their new starting quarterback through the transfer portal. I bet they aren't done yet either. Texas is in no means back yet, and you need to be able to develop these players if you want to compete for championships, but I think they're in a much better position than they were a month ago. Sark spoke on the recruiting class saying, We've put a lot of work for the last 11 months to develop really good relationships with a lot of these guys. Ultimately, you want to recruit the best players that fit your culture and what you're trying to develop, which is clearly the stage we're in. But also fill needs, and I thought we had some pretty significant needs that we need to address. And I thought the staff did a nice job of addressing those needs and identified the really good players that embody the characteristics we're looking for. The competitiveness, the football IQ, the pride. And ultimately, I think that's what this class is going to resemble. Going forward, there's a possibility Texas brings in Gary Patterson with Sark telling Horns 24-7 Sports, I've got obviously a great deal of respect for Gary. He's done a fantastic job, really built that program into what it is to make it one of the more desirable jobs in the country. I give him a lot of credit for that. I know he's trying to figure out in what capacity does he want a continuous profession. We have not made any determinations on if we would want him here or if he would want to be here. But the reality of it, there's definitely a level of respect for the job that he's done at TCU. Patterson would be looking to be a special assistant to the head coach like Jerry Kill was to him at TCU. I think the future looks bright for Texas, but that just might be me reading into everything too much. What do you think? Is Steve Sarkeesian the right man to turn Texas around? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos right here. 
Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.